Hello folks, it is time for some more Hobby Nightmares. If you want to send in any of your Hobby Nightmares, please make sure you do so to hobbynightmares at gmail.com. That is hobbynightmares at gmail.com. The email address is down below for you to send in your own Hobby Nightmares. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. We also have a new channel on the horizon that we're currently doing uh, video game content on. And that is this one. It's Northern Exile Gaming. Head on over there. If you like what I do, you want to hear more from me uh, away from the hobby, away from tabletop stuff and more into video games, that's the place to go. Um, also, we'll be doing full Let's Plays on there. That's right. I'm bringing Let's Plays back. It has been decreed. Uh, there aren't enough Let's Plays on YouTube at the moment, so I'm going to start doing that. It's not going to get any views, but it doesn't matter because I enjoy doing them. Right. Cool. Moving on. Into our next part of our content here it is john who has some stuff to say in his hobby nightmare this is a epic one so buckle yourselves in make sure you've got a nice cup of tea or a beverage of your choice if you're on lunch hour from work or whatever it is you're doing let me entertain you with this ballad about somebody with a rather hipster beard but anyway let's jump in john says dear north i love listening to your videos and have a horror story for you. This one's from a few years ago when I was playing D&D &D with a particular group of friends. One of the guys I played with ended up being quite disruptive in our group. The guy was having some serious issues, including a downward mental health spiral and being convicted of threatening a man with a weapon. Read on if you'd like to know the full tale, and if you think it's worth reading on your channel, please do. All right. The terrifying tale of the knife-wielding hipster beard. <laughs> Chapter 1. He will not divide us. That sounds cringe, but yeah, anyway. I met hipster beard in the 2000s. We were both hanging out around the music scene and would see each other sporadically over the years. If you want an image of hipster beard, just imagine Shia LaBeouf during his he will not divide us phase. In recent years, I ran into Hipster Beard via another Dungeon Masters D&D 5th edition game. Now this DM was a hardcore conservative. He was into comics gate, was against all the diversity in D&D and comics, and we'll call him Con Beard. Dude, if he's against diversity and all that sort of stuff, he's in the wrong hobby. <laughs> he's, if he likes playing D&D, man, is he in the wrong place? Um, at first, things started out pretty well. Hipster Beard was hanging out with us at a local bar, and Con Beard would use the bistro area to run games in. Now, the thing with Con Beard is that he liked to run a lot of games. We're talking two to three a week. He would run a mix of modules, including The Curse of Strahd, and a long-running game set in Waterdeep. Con Beard even started to get into ICRPG when RPG creators jumped on the political bandwagon. Okay, I don't know what that is. What is an RCP... RCRPG? RCRPG meaning? Um, In-card deck role-playing game. It's a classic, almost OCR kind of game with a few innovative, fun twists. Okay, it's a card game. All right, fair enough. Um, I played a few of these games and enjoyed them for the most part. The thing was, with Conbeard running so many games, it meant he needed players. This meant recruiting heavily, and at times, dredging the bottom of the barrel. Enter Hipster Beard. It was good to see him after sporadic contact since the 2000s, and we'd hang out together and chat with Conbeard. He and Conbeard had some uh, left-of-center beliefs, and Conbeard believed in UFOs, and Hipster Beard believed in ghosts. I remember Conbeard telling me how he'd been camping in the woods and seen things. Conbeard was up in a hammock one night and heard a rustling at his back, uh, in his backpack below him. No, he didn't see what it was, but it moved away with the footsteps of a man. I told him it was more than likely a native animal searching for his sandwiches, but it could have been anything. Q X Files theme here, I suppose. So now we've set up the people who are in the story, let's move on, shall we? Chapter 2. What do you mean, learn the rules? We continue to game, 
myself, Hipster Beard, Con Beard, and a few others. Yeah, you, you, just to stop there, you uh, confused me a bit before because you said Con Beard was very um, conservative, and then you said he was left of centre. So I don't, I don't know what, it, whatever. I started out my own game, a D and D fifth edition horror campaign set in Waterdeep. And Hipster Beard was keen to join, and Con Beard was with us too. Con Beard started out a COS campaign, but I didn't bother playing, as Con Beard was sadly a fairly vanilla dungeon master, who wasn't really able to think laterally, or creatively, or bring the horror or atmosphere that St Strahd required. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, can we keep euphemisms and, you know, to, to, to a, a minimum? COS, just say Curse of Strahd, man. Then we all know what we're talking about. Remember, when you're writing The Hobby Nightmare, you're writing for an audience. You're not just writing to me. You're writing for an audience, too. You've got to know what, what you're talking about. So this guy, so Conbeard couldn't really do A Curse of Strahd because he wasn't very um, good at horror. It is weird that, as a DM, you've got to be really, really good at thinking on your feet to be good at horror. You know? Anyway. Then Conbeard started to complain about Hipster Beard. Hipster Beard hasn't actually bothered to learn the rules. I asked Hip Hipster Beard when the last time was that he read the rules, and he wasn't happy with that. He'd not actually read any 5th edition rules, so I encouraged him to read them. He did kind of get better, but slowly, bit by bit, and his paladin was getting better and better in the game. I was starting to hang out with Hipster Beard outside of gaming too. He opened up and told me about some legal troubles that he was having. Something about an old man, the police, and so on. Being a former police officer, I listened, and advised him to lawyer up. I got the feeling I wasn't getting the whole truth, though. Nevertheless, I started to hang out with Hipster Beard some more, and Hipster Beard started to complain about Con Beard in return. Hipster Beard was bored at Con Beard's gaming sessions. He played some sort of rogue archer in those sessions. Fire arrow, wait your turn. Fire arrow, wait your turn. Hipster Beard would, would, uh, would continue to complain as we reclined on his, on his couch, saying that this was all that Con Beard settings ever evolved into. Fire an arrow and wait for your turn to end. His place was a hoarder's wet dream. Boxes of collectibles and unassembled furniture lined his house from wall to wall. I felt really bad for the guy. His mother had passed a year ago, and I could see it had really affected him. He said she was his best friend, and now he lived alone and really wanted company. I started to suspect he was gaming simply to avoid to have people in his life. He was also in a band. Well, that's at least something to make up for being totally unemployed. I asked Hipster Beard if he'd tried participating in Con Beard's games, if he'd take the initiative. But nope, that wasn't happening. So I thought I'd join one of these games, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I started to see that Conbeard, despite his political leanings, really wasn't the problem. Yeah, um, that is one of the things with friends. This is North talking now, I, I will carry on in just a sec. That is one of the things with friends. It is, it is incredibly frustrating to have a friend who is determined to sit in the fire and say, Oh, I'm burning! Step outside of it then. No! Oh, no, no. You know, I've learned in life that there is a, a value to certain to a certain amount of coldness. There is a value to it. If you're able to, to, to try and help a friend and he wants to be helped, that's great. Right? That's great. You can help each other. And if he doesn't want to be helped right now, don't continue. Move on. And come back when he might want to be helped. You know? There are some people out there, I am afraid, who quite literally will sit in the fire and complain it's hot. They will sit there and go, it, it's really hot and I'm getting burned. We'll, we'll just step outside of it then and jump in the water. No. Right. All right. I'm starving. Okay, eat this. No. You know, it, it's literally that kind of... that kind of logic going through their brains. They're determined to suffer. And they're determined to drag everybody down with them. Um, this is kind of not easy because it, it plays on your empathy. Do you know what I mean? And everyone's got empathy. Well, most people do. Um, I certainly have a lot of empathy for a lot of people. But I've also learned to be like, do you know what? If you don't want to be helped, I'm not wasting my time. Right? If you're just going to be there and bitch and moan. I've had people email me 
and, and talk to me that way. And just try and unload on me constantly. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not doing this. I, I've, I've told you what I think you need to do to change your life. Or, or, or to, to help you out, right? If you're not going to take that advice, then fuck off. Don't keep coming back to me with the same stuff over and over again when you've done nothing to try and change your own circumstances. You know? That's what hipster be it is, I think. All right, let me take a sip of tea here. All right. Next chapter. The gaming pad takes shape. Oh, I like this. I spent more time with hipster beard outside of gaming. I decided to help him clean out his house. The promise was that we'd be able to gamble there instead of a local bar. The cleanup was a monumental task. We had to move boxes of collectibles up into the attic, meanwhile moving unassembled furniture way out of the way and disassembling a treadmill into another room. Man, that thing was like over a hundred pounds. We take frequent breaks and chat and get to know each other some more. Gradually, we cleared out both hipster beard living and dining room. This took several days of solid work, but it was rewarding. We assembled long sealed furniture and visited IKEA for some more. The gaming place was taking shape. During this time, I'd been encouraged to clean out the massive clutter from my bedroom and computer room, and what a difference that made. Also, as I got to know hipster beard, I noticed some odd behaviour. He would want me to do things for him, like drive whilst going to, sm to McDonald's. I think he, he means McDonald's, but he's trying to be clever. Uh, yet he had a car. He wanted me to lend him money for more furniture before welfare day. I'd bought a new car, so that was the perfect excuse to refuse a loan. Also, hipster beard needed help assembling a number of the items, so I helped him by following the instructions. He seemed better at it than I was. He didn't actually need me there to help with the furniture. Odd. Yeah, I think he, he wants a friend, man. Um, The money thing's a bit odd. Don't ask your friends for money if you can help it. Alright? It, it's not good. It really isn't good. It, it isn't a good place to start getting into. Um, If you can help it. Obviously, life happens, man. Life happens. But uh, you don't want to let money get between friends. But yeah, I think he just wants you around, dude. I think he's like he's kind of clinging to you as a as a rock in the storm, and that's fine as long as he learns to swim. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what, do you know what I mean? Like like it's okay for you to cling to a rock in the storm, and it's okay for you to be that rock as long as the person clinging to you is wants to and is learning how to swim on their own. If they're doing that, then fine. If they're using you as a crutch to keep their life up, that's not sustainable for either of you, and it's going to end up in tears. Hips the beard and I continued to hang out as we cleared out his place, and each time he would continue to complain about Con Beard's Curse of Strahd game. I told him not to play in the game. He wanted me to run Curse of Strahd, and I told him I wouldn't, unless it was a one-shot. And funnily enough, Con Beard told me at a later stage that he was running Curse of Strahd. Hips, uh, he was running Curse of Strahd at Hips the Beard's request. Odd. Also during this time. Hips the Beard finally told me the story behind his legal troubles. Some months back, his neighbours had allegedly thrown a grass bottle into his front yard. He went outside and threw the bottle back, out in front of his neighbour's house. The bottle smashed against a light pole near their front yard, and the old man who lived next door came to Hips the Beard's front door to have a few words with him. Yeah, that's a bit of an extreme... The worst thing you do is that you go to their house with a bottle and say, listen guys, please don't throw this in my front yard. Here it is. And you put it down on their porch and you walk off, right? Like That's that's the most you do. Like Don't, don't smash glass in front of somebody's house because you don't know who's walking past. This hipster beard is not a very stable person. Hipster beard's response to this old man was to answer the door with a knife. He corralled the old man out of his yard at knife point and to his front gate. But here's the thing, the old guy wouldn't leave, and kept yelling and standing at, standing at the front gate. Pulling a knife on, the el on an elderly man. What a coward. Uh, that wasn't me, that was the guy saying that. Um, yeah, I mean, there are like personal property laws if you feel threatened in your own house in the US. Right? Uh, that, then that other person's taking their life into their own hands. Like, don't, 
don't come onto my property and threaten me. Like, if, if, if the old guy was there, like, like, kicking his door and and shouting at him, I wouldn't go out with a knife, but I would say, listen, you need to go. I'm going to call the police or something like that. You know what I mean? Don't go at him with a knife, obviously. That's a silly thing to do. But what I'm saying is that you are allowed to defend your own personal property if somebody's coming in there trying to, you know, um, you know, have truck with you, you know? Anyway, the police were called and separated Hipster Beard from the old guy. The old guy's son came home, leapt over Hipster Beard's fence and ran at him to smash the living hell out of him. Hipster Beard was lucky the cops were there to de-escalate and save him from a real beating. I don't think he would have stood much chance against the young guy in his prime. Hipster Beard was given a court attendance notice by the police for having an intimidating weapon, along with another charge. Where I live, self-defense is not a reasonable excuse to carry a knife. No, it isn't. It isn't. Um, but, you know, Hipster Beard, asked, I'm just very libertarian on that. I don't know. If it's my house, dude, like, and I don't want you there, you're leaving one way or the other. Um, especially if I've got a family inside. I've, I've said this to, to my missus before as well. Um, she doesn't get it. She, she doesn't get that, you know, we were talking about personal defense and, and I was like, listen, if we've got kids and you're upstairs with the kids and I'm up there and I hear somebody downstairs like moving around and I go down and I see that somebody I don't know or, or, or they've got their back to me, I'm I'm picking up the, the largest, heaviest thing I, I, I can in my hands and I'm caving their skull in. I, I don't care. I would rather I would rather go to prison than, than risk somebody getting the better of me and then going upstairs and doing things to my family, right? That's just how I am. I, I, I would don't come into my house. If you come into my house with, without an invitation and it's the middle of the night and we're asleep, you're dead. <laughs> like they're, 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 that, that is it. You are dead. Like you, you have, you have, you have committed suicide via North is what you've done, right? That's what you've done. Like you are now in my house, uninvited at night. You can only be there for a nefarious, for a nefarious thing, and I'm not going to risk my life making sure I don't hurt you too badly. That's not what I'm. I'm not going to do that. If I've got a sharp object, I'm coming at you. If I've got a, if I've got a anything on me, I'm coming at you. If, if it's just me in the house, then yeah. Do you know what? I'll probably just try and call out to you and try and get you to leave the house by by intimidating you, getting you out of there. Fair enough. If it's just me, but if my wife and kids are upstairs, nah, man. No, there's no mercy. No mercy. I will have zero, zero guilt over what happens to you. Zero. You're in my house. You're not invited. You're, you were there to do bad things to my family. And that's the end of that. You know? That's just how I am with these situations. If somebody's in your house and they're not supposed to be there, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do to keep you, your wife and kids safe. I'm, I'm sorry, lads. Just it, it, That is what it is. If that ain't you, you shouldn't have a wife and kids. Like you're there to keep them safe. That's what you're, that's what you're on this planet to do, to to bring up good kids, to be strong and independent and, and and good people, and to keep them safe. And if your response to that is, is to not go over and do whatever you can to get that guy out of your house and at the lowest risk possible, no risk, and no risk is going up behind them with a big heavy object and smacking them so hard that they don't get up again. That's no risk. That's the lowest risk you can get, and and I, I will I will die on that hill. Like you should be doing that, if somebody's in your house and they're not invited and your wife and kids are there. What hipster beard is doing here, is he is unhinged and he's going way beyond, what he should be doing in defending his personal property, right? Because he's unhinged. Because he because he clearly is, he's got something wrong with him. Um. <laughs> This may be one of the oddest people we've had on Hobby Nightmares. Very, very odd person. Um, but anyway. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Hipster Beard asked me what I thought of the situation. And me, a former police officer, who'd seen a man cut open like a beef fillet, who'd seen a man freshly shot and listened to his kids scream, who'd had an instructor who watched a colleague die in an off-duty knife attack, if this had been years earlier, when I was fresh out of the job, I wouldn't have been as diplomatic or as empathetic as I was. I said, well, as a friend, I can say we all make mistakes. The main thing is you can learn from it. 
Why did you threaten the old man with a knife? Hipster Beard said, I didn't want to hurt him, I just wanted to scare him off. I said, did you ever consider what would happen if the knife ended up on you or in him? I can give you some examples. Uh, yeah, right, no thanks, Hipster Beard said. I pull a knife on someone, what would you expect would happen? Being charged is getting off lightly. I was scathing at Hipster Beard's stupidity. Worse still, he'd admitted this to the cops before speaking to a lawyer, thinking his honesty would get him let off. Hipster Beard wasn't the brightest spark. This is an ex-cop saying that too. This is an ex-cop telling you, watch what you say. <laughs> Round police officers, watch what you say. Um, I let this, yeah, police officers are not your friend. The police are not your friends, all right? Uh, I let this sink in and considered this confession. The guy had lost his mother. Probably was dealing with a lot of grief and isolation. And he was cool with me. So I chalked her up as, as a one-off. We all do stupid things at times. It turned out he ended up with a two grand fine and a good behaviour bond. Yet he somehow thought he'd come out on top because his neighbours looked scared at court. Figure that one out if you can. Yeah, this, is, this guy has the mental acuity of a child. He's a child in a man's body. As the weeks rolled on, I brought the gaming group to Hipster Beard's place to run my horror campaign. It was looking really tidy. We put together a cool glass dining table, dimmed the lights, and put on some brooding music. It was a real hit. We ran an awesome session. The problem was, Hipster Beard didn't want Con Beard running games at his place. I was honoured he'd actually let he, he'd let me actually, but after all the work I put in, I was hoping we could all play games at Hipster, Hipster Beard's place regularly and avoid random people intruding at the pub. A while later, I spoke with Hipster Beard online, and he sent me some footage of police corralling protesters in my city, and he wanted to know the ins and outs of police riot tactics. I told him I had no clue why they corralled these people. I'd been given the most basic training, which involved walking in formation with a shield. Hipster Beard wasn't into the left-leaning side of politics, as it turns out. Oh, sorry. Hipster Beard was into the left-leaning side of politics, as it turns out. He sent me stuff on Trump being a narcissist, but like Con Beard, he hadn't bothered to do any actual reading, so it was easy to take his argument apart. Meanwhile, Con Beard started messaging me. He got into an argument with Hipster Beard. I wonder why. <laughs> these are two people. Dude, these are two people that you should just keep as far away from each other as possible. As I got, these, these are just oil and water, man. Get them away from each other. He said Hipster Beard called him a vile name and had a meltdown. I'm not surprised. This is Hipster Beard we're talking about. What he failed to mention was that Conbeard actually measured Hipster Beard and started uh, message message sorry I think you meant to say message there not message measured actually messaged Hipster Beard and started trolling him with conservative politics. Who would have guessed it's how things turned out? Hipster Beard was be was beginning his descent. I feel politics can be like a religion: the further from the centre, the more the more unhinged the person. It can be the canary in the coal mine of somebody's psyche. Dude, that's such a good analogy. Such a good analogy. I feel politics can be like religion. The further from the centre, the more unhinged the person. I agree. I agree. It can be the canary in the coal mine of somebody's psyche. I agree completely. I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that one. If, if I'm having a pint with you, and you discuss like in-depth politics within the first five minutes I'm yeah I, I don't think we're gonna get on you know I just do not think we're gonna get on and we, and we probably shouldn't be talking um anyway there were further random outbursts from hipster beard dude this guy's just a fucking maniac I, I remember sending him pictures of a lizard I saw at work and his response was shit on it <laughs> don't you Oh yeah, what? What the hell? Where did that come from? The guy was starting to, to develop serious mood swings and become very unhinged. I remember getting together for a trip to Ikea with Hipster Beard. Why are you still hanging out with this person? 
Why? You guys bring this on yourselves. Every time I read one of these, I'm like, why? Why are you still hanging out with this person? What are you doing? <laughs> oh my god. I remember getting together for a trip to Ikea with Hipster Beard and another player, Mike, we'll call him. Mike had been uh, doing it... Oh, Mike had been having it a bit rough during COVID lockdown, and I thought I'd invite him along. Mike was a good friend, kind, courteous, and always there for you. I got along with him very well. He came over a bit early, and Hipster Beard refused to allow Mike into his place, citing bad personal hygiene and Mike's weight. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus. Okay, fair enough. It's Hipster Beard's house. We went to Ikea and things went fine. Dude, you're very understanding. But in subsequent meetings with Hipster Beard, he continued to complain about Mike. He complained about Con Beard as well. He continued to complain and continued to complain. D dude, there's one common denominator here. You know what I mean? A few weeks later... Hipster Beard had another meltdown, this time at Con Beard's D&D game. He rage quit. Man, I wish I was there to hear it. I spoke with Hipster Beard the next day to figure out what had happened. All he did was launch into complaining about Mike. I told him I'd had enough of the bitching, and was pretty pissed off with him for having constantly insulted a good friend of mine. I realised Hipster Beard was getting more and more unhinged, and I was becoming less and less tolerant of it. I thought about uh, him pulling the knife on the old man. I thought about how we sat a few feet away from his kitchen and the arsenal loaded in there. I remember my training in the police. During a domestic, separate them and keep them out of the fucking kitchen. I realised that Hipster Beard was, was becoming increasingly mentally disturbed and I didn't feel safe being around him, nor did I feel safe for my other friends and players. Then Covid hit, just in time. Do just in time. COVID came along just in time, man. For you. For you, in this situation. The hardcore lockdowns really started. And in a way, it was a relief because Hipster Beard refused to play online. I explained to my gaming group why I didn't want Hipster Beard back very quietly. I stopped talking to him and removed him from my social media. All I can say is this. You can have all of the empathy in the world, but empathy won't stop a knife in your gut. Hipster Beard needed professional help, but I was no longer a healthcare nor a law enforcement professional. That was the end of his gaming with us. Let the experts take care of the rest. Thanks for reading and listening, North. Keep doing what you're doing, John. That was brilliant. That was really, that was one of the best hobby nightmares we've had in a long time. That was great. Um, one thing I would say, John, maybe it would, maybe it would have been good for you to like, um, just say to him, before you end things, just go, listen, man, I'm leaving. Here's why. You need to go and get some help, and I'm deleting you from my social media. See you later. I know you don't want to, like, spark a meltdown or I'm turning up at your place or something. Maybe that's what it was, but I I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe give the chat, but give the guy a chance to go and get some therapy. Just say, listen, you need to go and get some therapy. You know, that's it is what it is. Or maybe you did the right thing. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm not there in the situation, which is why I'm playing devil's advocate there and saying maybe you should have like encouraged him to go to therapy before you just ditched him. But if you're feeling unsafe, look out for number one, man. Get out of there. You know, I think you did the right thing. Get out of there. Ugh. Anyway. Jared says, Howdy, North. It's me, Jared, again. I actually have a somewhat more wacky hobby nightmare for you this time. It's about the game of Warhammer 40,000 I've just played this Saturday. It was at the same store I've gone to before. But this game, it wasn't about G.I. Joe. No. It's another fellow I know who I'm going to refer to as Kirby. Hence the Nightmare in Dreamland reference in the title of the email. Okay. For clarification, Kirby and I had sort of a deal for a few models to trade before a game of 2k points. It was my orcs led by Daka Master versus his custodies. A funny part is that the custodian wardens used to be in the story were actually mine and I painted them. I'll post a picture in the email. That'll be for Sundays, man. Not for now, but it'll be on Sunday. I don't know how my relationship with this player is on and off. I would say so. What? Oh, on and off, I would say. Okay, 
All right, all right, fair enough. Yeah, some, sometimes with the way these things are written is a bit higgledy pickledy. So your relationship with with Kirby is on and off. Fair enough. Okay. While he seems friendly enough, he does some rather eccentric things. For starters, the last time he played was about two years ago. Or was it a year? When Leviathan launched, and he got the Tyranids. No problem there. But I recall him using a Biovore to blow up my Orc truck after the deployment card had all of our models all scrunched up in a diagonal deployment zone. Truth be told, I haven't thought much of the guy because I've been playing at my other store. Recently, however, we've struck a deal on Discord. He wanted my kill team of Custodian Wardens, my primed but not painted Imotech the Stormlord model, and some Necron Immortals, to which he had some second edition Pewter Chaos Demons. There is a Skull Taker, an old second edition Demon Prince, and a Skull Master on a Juggernaut. While some may find it crazy for me to have traded away my Necrons and my Custodies, I have a thing for Old Hammer, and I'm trying to bring back the past, especially because I love retro 80s power metal fantasy and brutal legend sort of stuff. I plan on refurbishing these models and bringing them in my 1000 points mixed Chaos Demons list this October around Halloween. Anyways, Kirby and I started to play after we agreed upon our trade. This time, we both were horizontal across the table. This was also the first time I brought into the store my painted Morganaut. I've used it before in another store, but it wasn't painted. And this is where the antics began. For starters, Kirby targeted the Morganaut first, which I get, yeah. I would like to take out the big goofy orc robot too first. But he used his venerated land raider and worst, my own custodies wardens to do so. This is, however, not the true nightmare of our tale. No. The issue is that he vaped all over my models, and for context, I am on the spectrum and have a very sensitive nose due to the death of my grandmother's passing a few years ago. Okay, I swore I'd never smoke or drink. However, I was in a confined space in the corner, and while I get that the others are okay with vaping in the store, I feel like you shouldn't vape on somebody's models or on their person. Especially seeming that he did it on purpose to my orc boys. Whether he was just goofing around or he's trying to mess with me, I didn't know. Uh, it, this just seems like rudeness, man. I, I'm not sure. Uh, this is one of those where I kind of I, I need to see the behaviour there in front of myself to give you a a full rundown of what I think is going on. But it just seems like, to me, the way you described it, he's just being rude and oblivious to people's needs and to common decency. Do you know what I mean? Uh, now, Kirby stated that he did it to add effects to the battle, but I feel he was just goofing around. But this definitely got me out of my comfort zone. I get some people use smoke generators on tabletop, but randomly huffing vape smoke on somebody's models without asking me rubs me the wrong way. Yeah, me too. Me, yeah, me, actually, now I think about it, yeah, me too. I would have asked him to stop. I don't know, yeah, you can we not, right? These are my models. Can you not blow your, your smoke on them? Thank you, you know. I also lost the battle. Whether he and I were just not aware of the 10th edition rules, I was sleep deprived when I arrived, and I just sort of went along with it, or perhaps he was playing a bit too shrewd, I do not know. I was only able to kill one Custodes, but I don't think he meant foul play. However, I am curious how I should have handled the vaping thing. On one hand, I generally don't smoke in I don't generally like smoke in general, but I don't like people vaping on, on my models. I have a huge tub of orcs now fumigating in my ventilated room right now. Dude, you just ask him to stop. It's, it's as simple as that, right? He is he is doing a behaviour. That whilst it's not really, really, really terrible and detrimental to your health, it is a, a, a unusual behaviour to do, right? So you just ask him to stop. Say, listen, man, can you please stop doing that, you know? Simple. Perhaps it's just that people at that store are different. A lot of people at the store are from the metro Atlanta region, and I'm from a more rural city. Well, I don't think Kirby has anything against me, I don't know how to handle the situation in regards to my models and vaping. Any advice before I move on? Uh, yeah, ask him to stop. That's it. You say, oh, listen, man, I, I understand what you're doing. It's okay. Uh, but, you know, that, that stuff kind of gets on my chest. And, 
I don't want my model smelling of smoke, so could you not do that? You know, I, I just, yeah. Nine times out of ten, they're going to go, yeah, no, no problem, no, no problem, no problem. If, if you get any response other than, yeah, no problem, I won't do it, sorry. If you get any response other than that, pack up your models. Okay? Because th there is no need. You, you Literally, the only response to that that's worthy of playing on is him going, sorry about that, man, no problem, I'll stop. Right? No problem. You forget about it, you move on. If he says, well, why? Why? Uh, um, no, actually, the smoke doesn't smell or stick to anything. If he starts to, like, like, qualify why he's doing it, say, okay, okay, clearly when we're not here for the same thing, I'm going to pack up my models, enjoy your win. And you pack up your models and you leave, right? That's what you do. Simple. Um, you know, that, that is, you were asking somebody not to invade your space or besmirch your personal property. If they refuse that, then just pack up. Just pack up. No hard feelings, just pack up. And move on. Um, other than that, the day went pretty well. I got tabled by him and my army wiped out before turn two. I actually just got tired and knew that the orcs, without their numerical advantage, have no chance against custodies. My plan originally was to encircle Kirby's forces and take objectives, but apparently there's no way you can move an entire land raider across the board on... There's a way you can move an entire land raider across the board on turn one now. No, there isn't. I'm, and that just sounds like bollocks. No, I don't think there is. If there is, guys, comment section. Is there a way in 10th edition to move a land raider across a full board right now on at the top of turn one? If there is, let me know in the comment section down below. I don't think there is. And if there is, I've not come across it. Not sure if that's an exploit, one of Games Workshop's doing, or a, or a crock of crap. Other than that, I conceded the game and went over to purchase my new Rooker Truck Squig Buddy. Or Squig Buggy. It's the Orc Beach Hot Dog Stand car that fires squigs and has a boy with a shotgun uh, riding shotgun. I plan on working it, uh, working on it after my doctor's appointment and blood work tomorrow. Anyways, I'll try to get the squig buggy and pewter second edition Chaos Demons all painted up. Like I said, I don't have any ill will against Kirby and I think the trade was fair. If I can learn how to work with, with caustic pewter metal models that is. This one wasn't as much of an, of an irritability as it was with GI Joe, but I it still I still thought it was not a it was not what I expected on a Saturday when I got to the store. Anyways, I hope you're doing all right, North, and I'm going to watch your videos to cope with the pain of blood being sucked out of my arm at the doctor like a vampire. Cheers. Okay. Um. Yeah. I, again, I've given you my advice, and I think I think you've kind of handled it quite well there. You just you didn't you didn't handle it in the moment as well as you should. But that's fine, you know, you didn't handle it as you should. You've all had those moments, and now you know what to do in future. Yeah? Cool. I'll be back tomorrow for some more Hobby Nightmares. I love you all a long time. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and have a good one. All right? I'll see you then. Bye now.